Welcome to the Micro Brewer Podcast. Here's your host, Joe Shellaroo. All right, and welcome to the fifth microbrewer podcast. Uh, so if you're looking to start up a brewery, have one, or are just really passionate about craft beer, hope you're coming to the right spot. Um, so overall, I'm excited. We made it to five already, so halfway to 10. Um, pretty big deal. And overall, just want to thank you for listening. Um, it means a lot to me. This podcast has already got a ton of great exposure, a lot of great listens, um, and it's just continuing to grow. So uh, if you got any friends or anybody who you think would want to listen, make sure you're sharing it with them. I would really appreciate it. Um, on this podcast, I'm really excited to introduce you to uh, Nathan Pierce. I'll talk more about it in the actual podcast interview, but really he's just one of the people who has reached out and contacted me, and he's one of the many people I've talked to that's thinking of starting a brewery, and so I thought that it would be really fun to share that with the rest of the Microbrewer podcast. So I'll just jump into the interview right now, so sit back and enjoy and on the podcast today, I'm really excited to introduce uh, the whole podcast audience, all of you, to Nathan Pierce. So originally when I started up Microbrewer, Nathan Pierce got in contact with me and had a couple questions. And as we were talking, I, I was just getting so much out of the conversations that I really wanted to share that with everybody. And I thought, how, how cool would it be on the podcast to be able to follow someone through their journey of actually starting up a brewery? Um, and so that's what Nathan and I talked about. And now I am very pleased to say that Nathan is willing to um, share his journey along the way. So welcome to the podcast, Nathan. Pleased to meet you, podcast audience. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's great to have you. Hey, so uh, for anybody who isn't familiar with you, Nathan, uh, can you give your background on what you did before and kind of how you decided that you really wanted to start a brewery? Yeah, I was. Well, most recently I was working for the Air Pollution Control District. It's like a local government agency trying to keep the air clean. And um, well, I quit about a year ago, last April, and had been thinking about starting a business the past few years. It was going to be probably wine and food. And um, actually, the way we kind of a friend and I, a friend since junior high, were have been talking about starting a business for a few years, and we were both in a, a wedding of a, another friend of ours. And um, hopefully, they won't mind me saying there were a couple of guys from Ninkasi Brewing who were at the wedding. They were friends with the groom, so. We were just really excited to hear their story. I hadn't heard of Ninkasi before that from Eugene, Oregon. And um, that kind of made the shift from wine and food to brewery or brew pub or something along those lines. Plus, it seemed like a pretty good fit because Monterey County, where I live in California, is just so um, filled with wine already. I don't, a lot of, Maybe, I don't know if there's a lot of wine drinkers in your podcast audience. They, some people might be offended, but <laughs> I'd like to say that we, Monterey County rivals like Napa Sonoma wine. Like we got a lot of really good wine going on in Monterey already. It just seemed like it was kind of saturated or overdone or really competitive, and there's not as much beer going on, at least on this side of the bay. There's lots of awesome things happening in Santa Cruz on the north side of Monterey Bay but just a few things going on in the Monterey area. So what, what made you really want to take this step? And you, you quit your job before. So what was the defining point that you said, all right, I'm, I'm done here? Um, well, we had been thinking about starting a business for a while, I guess, um, sort of entrepreneurial delusions <laughs> started like, <laughs> many, many years ago, but sort of got more serious in the past, I don't know, five to eight years or so. And then, um, to be honest, I didn't actually just quit my job just to start a brewery. There were other issues going on at work that were um, 
going on for a while that didn't seem to be resolving. So it was time for me to move on. And, you know, they, they say probably desperation is a good motivator. So <laughs> I don't want to not be homeless. I got to make something happen. <laughs> and I know there's a ton of people out there and they're, they're just really scared to take that first step to, <laughs> to devote themselves to this new business. So, so how's it been since you did that? Well, I am a pretty good saver of money and I don't really spend a lot. So I had a lot of money. I had a bit of a cushion in the bank and this year I'm seeing how much that is being depleted and it's starting to get a little bit scary. Um, but I have like recently in the past few months realized that I need to get a job and I took up a little bit of valet parking and I have purposely skipped some shifts in, in um, exchange for like taking classes at the small business development center or something like that. Just like consciously reminding myself what my focus is. Like I don't want to give up on this dream. And so I do need to pay the bills, but I need to make sure that I'm setting aside time to um, keep moving forward in this process. Yeah. So, so when, when you're, you don't have that structure in place, I, I know you're talking about really trying to keep focus and keep, really keep the goal in mind. Are there any specific ways that you've been able to do that from just going from the, your normal nine to five job to just no structure, but I got to get this going? Yeah, it was difficult. And I've only recently been able to solve that a little bit. Um, there, there's, um, sorry, I'm kind of rearranging my chair over here. No, no, that's fine. I guess there's, um, pros and cons of making your own schedule and I've been out of work for like a year like I should have finished my business plan by now and I'm just getting to the point where I feel like I have pretty solid numbers and I feel like I have a pretty good description in the plan to where I'm ready to like start sharing around a draft pretty soon like it I was hoping to be Monday night and I realized I had one of my formulas wrong in my Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> we went from like making a ton of money to actually making no money at all. <laughs> but I've oh, man. Some adjustments and it looks like it will be profitable eventually. <laughs> so um, something that really helped me was um, in the beginning, I started listening to Entrepreneur on Fire with John Lee Dumas's podcast. And so often he says on there that you are, each of us is made up of the five people with whom you hang out the most. And I've kind of suspected that, like it seems like successful people hang out with successful people and sort of deadbeats hang out with deadbeats, you know? <laughs> so that's my way of hanging out with successful people. I don't know any like, great entrepreneurs or like CEOs or anything like that. So I listen to his podcast as often as possible to, and um, like just to stay motivated and realize that there are other people out there who have quit their jobs or just like gone on to create something out of nothing. And I can do this too. Yeah. Another thing was like productivity podcasts. And through one of those, darn it, I wish there's one of two podcasts that I heard Donald Miller on, the author Donald Miller. I think it was um, Beyond the To-Do List, maybe. Okay. <clears throat> he was, Donald Miller was talking about this tool that he has that he developed um, when he was, like, struggling to, to, uh, put out some books. He put out like a few New York times bestsellers and then he was like getting slower and slower each year. So he started researching a bunch of that, like, um, a procrastination and productivity stuff. And he just developed a tool for himself that worked so well that he's just given it to people to use. And so he has, he gives that out for free on his website. It's called the, uh, um, storyline productivity schedule. So that 
kind of finally answers your question, like what it's like to work without a structure of going into the office eight to five every day. This thing yeah. is really cool because it it finally realizes like my supervisors didn't realize it's better for your brain to work around the clock rather than what is it like make the clock work around your brain than trying to work around the clock. I'm totally describing this wrong. I <laughs> know. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, my supervisors used to tell me like, okay, set aside two hours in the day to do this task and two hours to do that task. And that never really fit me very well because like right when I get on a roll, I'm like at the peak of my productivity. Things are going good. I've got all these creative juices flowing and I'm making lots of progress. And oops, the calendar says I need to start this other task now. And it totally disrupts the flow of work. So this is just like pick three things in the day. Don't pick eight things because nobody's ever did, able to do like eight big projects in a day. Just pick like two or three things. Do it. Make breaks, which has been really big for me. They're just in the past couple of weeks, I've been realizing how big breaks are. Because there's been times when I want to totally just charge on. Like I, I feel like I'm making good progress and I'm in a good workflow. I'm starting to slow down a little bit. And I want to keep on working hard, but instead I'll just go outside and I'll take a walk. <laughs> and here in Monterey, it's like I'm just two blocks from the ocean, and I walk down to look at the seals on the beach. There's lots of pregnant mamas getting ready to have their baby seals and stuff. So getting the heart flowing, getting the body moving is like a totally different thing from getting your brain moving. And when I come back, to my house and start working on the brain stuff again at the computer, I'm totally way more productive than I would be if I had just charged it without taking a break. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you and me sound really alike. Uh, you know, once I get going on something, I just love to zone out, just completely dig into it. And it's all those little interruptions that'll bring you out of that zone and having that scheduled time frame. It really makes it difficult when you really get going. Totally. And, yeah. And I do envy you uh, walking around in Monterey. Um, even though Wichita is beautiful, uh, we, we don't quite have the ocean next door. <laughs> so This year in particular has been super nice. Like today was, I don't know, probably 70s at least. And um, it's supposed to be still kind of coldish time of year. We've had a really, really nice winter. I'm trying to enjoy the warm days, but... It's not really supposed to happen. We're going to have a pretty bad drought this year. Oh, okay. What, what's your background? Do you have a background in business or anything like that that's helping you out and develop the business plan and get the idea for the brewery? Or are you just picking this up as you go along? Mostly I'm just dumb enough to try it. <laughs> so what resources are you using? I mean, it, it seems like a really daunting task to just, well, once you're done with your first job and you say, okay, I, I want to go do this. You got the motivation. Now, now where do you go from there? Um, I could kind of just give your audience a little bit of background. I do have a degree, but it's in environmental studies. So I don't have a business degree. I, the job that I had, um, previously was I was managing a million dollar grant program. I like to say it that way because it sounds a little bit more exciting. <laughs> so I have experience like um, keeping track of a million dollars, giving it out to lots of different places and, and kind of budgeting for that. I had learned a ton of Excel stuff. I've been using a ton of Excel spreadsheets in this process of budgeting for the brewery. But I mean, if somebody were to do it on paper, it would be pretty crazy, but it's doable. I mean, somebody doesn't really need to even have computer skills. And if you, I highly recommend them. Like you could just pick them up from a, from a local um, sort of like an office training business or something like that. Other than that, um, I've been listening to some podcasts getting a lot of info from the Brewers Association and touring some breweries. Yeah, so so what's your background in in beer overall? So you were talking about that you were really liking wine. Tell tell me about your background in beer. Yeah, my background in alcohol in general is kind of recent. A friend talked me into going into Europe. Actually, the friend 
Um, my friend from junior high who I mentioned, his name is Tim. He's been in the wine industry, and he wanted to go to Europe. And I wasn't even into alcohol. I just said, if we get to see some old art and some old buildings, I'll cruise along. But we got to tasting the, like, oak, the, the wine when it's still in the oak barrels, you know, down in the cellars in Burgundy. And that's when I was like, wow, I didn't know wine could taste like this. So I really got into wine. And honestly, I maybe still love that more than beer. It's just been in the past couple of years that I sort of purposely sought out beer because so many of my friends drink beer. And I wanted I know that it's like a really, really creative time. Many people say a renaissance in beer right now. And that there's like a lot. There's like quite a bit of variety out there. It's comparable, I think, in a lot of ways to wine. So I definitely don't have any experience working at a brewery, making beer. I definitely haven't even been drinking beer that long, but I've been, um, I was about to say, drinking as much as I can. <laughs> like, I've been really purposely trying to drink as many different kinds of beer as I can because it's interesting to me, but also because I know it's going to be important to me. Um if when I open a brewery. <laughs> so since you haven't brewed beer, are are you going to try to pick that up or would you be looking to bring somebody else in who has that expertise? I went to um, my friend's house a couple times and we made some like five gallon batches in his backyard. He's been making beer for a year or so. So he's kind of new just at the home brew thing. So Having toured some of the other breweries, I I am I feel like even just a small like homebrew um scale, really I can see the correlations to the bigger picture and it and that helps me understand the whole process. But I don't plan on brewing at the brewery that I want to open. My I don't really have a passion for making great beer. My passion is bringing great beer to the people. Okay. And I've kind of worried sometimes about that. A friend of mine who's a musician, I keep on mentioning these unnamed friends. I have a lot of friends. <laughs> Another friend of mine, he he's a banker, I could say. Um not like a New York Wall Street banker. He's like a small branch. He also is a musician and he plays bass and he's like, "You know what? A lot of people, I think he started playing guitar actually and then he took up bass." <clears throat> too because so much so many times it's easy it's easy for a bassist or a drummer to find a band to work with because everybody wants to be the star guitarist you know mm -hmm. he said everybody wants to be the star brewmaster but nobody wants to do like the junky business work behind the scenes sort of infamous unfamous work so he's like that's kind of cool it should be easy for me to partner up with a bazillion other people who want to be the star brewmaster or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's huge too, that you, you know that that's probably not where your passion's going to lie. But again, you know that you need to put quality beer out there or your business isn't going to succeed. So it's just knowing your limits and what your strengths really are. And then going and finding those people who really have those strengths that you don't bring, but then you can bring a lot of other things to the table. Yeah, nobody can do all of it themselves. That's something that I'm not very good at is introspection. That's something that I need to get better at, especially um, trying to be an entrepreneur, is um, understanding my not only my weaknesses, but also my strengths too. Yeah, yeah, and that that's really key because you can – if you can get to that point where you can really look at yourself and know, all right, I'm not good at this. You can try to find somebody else who can do that for you or else you can consciously work at it to get better at whatever that task is. And I, I know I've struggled with that along the road too, where I'm just trying to plow through something and then realize that, man, this is really not where my passion lies. I should find a different way to get this done. Mm. And I'm glad you're doing this podcast too, because I was considering doing a podcast just like this. <laughs> and now I know since you're doing such a good job with it, I don't have to focus on that. I could focus on other things. <laughs> that's probably something that's important too, like along this process is realizing, like I'm kind of a perfectionist. I'm interested in so many different things. There's been a few times 
where I've consciously told myself, okay, I want to look into this sort of piece of information right now, but I don't need to know that right now. I could look that up later on. Like that's just going to bog me down if I go this direction or that direction. Just kind of state realizing like what the main thing is and stick with that. Trying not to get pulled in too many different directions. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes me think of another point too is how, how do you feel like the relationships around you have helped you keep moving towards your goal? Do, have you built those friendships that you feel that can support it? I know you talked about the podcast being your, your successful friends, but are, are there other people around there that are really pushing you to move forward? Like I said, I don't really know anybody who's um, started businesses too much. My sister had a uh, um, baby clothes store for a little while but she and I haven't really talked about that process too much and my parents recently started a real estate agency but my dad recently told me that he's not an entrepreneur I think he is but he says he's not because I think the reason he feels that way is because he and my mom have been selling real estate for like 20 years and they've always been um, doing that under another real estate agency so they don't really feel like I mean, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but maybe they don't really feel like they are branching out, like they started a new business. It's just kind of like a continuation of what they've been doing. So some of my other friends, I guess to speak about the people around me, like encouraging and whatnot, I've had to realize when people don't see my vision and they don't share my vision, they don't really understand what I'm doing. And sometimes they're... Maybe they have my best interest in mind and they're encouraging me to not do this and just get a job, like a real job, (laughs) because I definitely need to start to bring in some more money to pay the bills. Or maybe they really, like, don't want me to succeed. I mean, I don't want to, like, put the blame on too many people, but this is, like, a phenomenon I've heard among entrepreneurs is that some people have friends who, like, they don't want you to succeed because then it means that they're going to be held accountable. Like everybody has dreams. But some people just don't act on their dreams, you know, and if they see their friends around them actually achieving their dreams, then they're going to have to get off the couch and make their dreams come true too. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot easier to just say, well, that's never going to work. And so I'm not going to try. I'm just going to, you know, keep bogging that dream down in the back of my mind. So I don't think about it. And if I don't see you succeed, then it makes it easier to keep my dream just bogged down. So, yeah, Yeah. I understand what you're saying. I've had a lot of dreams bogged down or just dreams that I didn't really follow through on. And I've been realizing that, like seeing pattern in the past, I guess, during my adulthood. And in the the last few dreams I've followed up a little bit on, but haven't really followed through to completion. So I'd say along this process is definitely the furthest I've ever gotten on some crazy idea. And I'm eager to to push forward and and see if we can make it happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and one other thing that's been great, and I've been getting as much out of this as you probably have or even more than what you have, but uh, just talking with you about the process and you're bringing so much to the table as ideas for microbrewer and how I can make it better too. I, it, it's just so fun to have that person to talk to and... When, when I'm talking to you um, and I'm saying, you know, I should really try that out, then I feel accountable, like I got to do it. Because the next <laughs> time I talk to you, you're probably going to hold me to it. <laughs> and I got to thank you, too, for offering to just have me on your podcast. And, like, maybe we should give the full disclosure to your audience that in exchange for letting you follow me, you've um, you've you've given me advice that you've found, you know, from talking to all the different brewers that you've talked to and whatnot so far. So that's really been beneficial to me and, um, it kind of holding me accountable too. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of holding you accountable, um, I mean, what are key milestones that are coming up for you? And, And when do you think that those next milestones will be reached? Okay. So I, um, that's another productivity thing is like setting deadlines and even accountability. Like I've always been afraid of telling people about my crazy dreams. I only like my closest friends, but with this one, I've been telling as many people as possible. 
Another thing is like one of the reasons that I agreed to work with you is because it would put me in front of literally a worldwide audience. And now if I fail, I'm going to fail in front of the whole world. <laughs> but if you succeed, you're going to succeed in front of the whole world too. <laughs> yes. And it's like, I know that we're going to be talking like this on a perhaps irregular schedule, but I'm going to like want to give your audience like some let them hear about some advance in my process or something like that yeah speaking of advancements so like steps coming up is i signed up for a regional sort of a business plan competition it's called the startup challenge in the tri-county area here in the monterey bay and um that let's see i did my application which is basically a one-page business plan and the next step is everybody who applied has to do a five-minute pitch on march 28th okay so i'm i'm i really need to like finalize my financials at least my financials because i like all the other part of the business plan, sort of like the description of what we're going to do. I know that in my head. I have it written out pretty well, but I could just talk about that anytime. The financials, like how much money are we going to make on a monthly basis? When's our break even point? Like how quickly and how much are we going to be growing and expanding? That's what I need to nail down by, by the 28th. Okay. Preferably sooner so that I can get my five minute pitch ready. <laughs> and, and yeah, the, the numbers part, that, that can be a real challenge for a lot of people. You, you get a lot of people who are really passionate about brewing beer may or may not have the, the business background and um, yeah, g remembering all those numbers so you can just cite them off, especially when you're given the pitch and potentially nervous, that, that can be difficult. Oh, that's actually something that I'm not very good at. I've always just depended on my papers, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't need to memorize it. It's in my 20-page report that I just wrote. <laughs> it's so hard to find it when I need it. Yeah. So I'm going to have to, like, make some study cards or something. Yeah, yeah. I know memorization. I'm just terrible at it. <laughs> so, yeah, any pointers that you get, I'm all ears. <laughs> that um spreadsheet that you did with the... uh 12 questions to ask, 12 financial questions asked to start your brewery was pretty helpful. Okay. I could recommend that to your audience. Oh, that's great it, to hear. In your blog, um, you posted that in one of your blogs with the Excel spreadsheet. I think that's a really good tool to get sort of an overall picture. It was easy for me to fill it out because I had already been working so long on a, and I had those numbers already. So it was easy for me to drop in the numbers and sort of get a quick look at the finances and then check that back to my own calculations. Okay. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the feedback on that. Um, and, and what Nathan was talking about was the, it was an article called The 12 Questions uh, You Need to Ask to Plan Your Brewery. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, you can just go to microbrewer.com slash financials and it'll be right there. So microbrewer.com slash financial or financials. So I'll, I'll link both of them. Sweet. Yeah. So... So you've got the the business plan, you got the pitch coming up. Anything else that's coming up? I'll probably need to find um let me see. I'll pull out my calculator. I got new numbers. One moment, please. Oh, no. The next step after doing the business plan, I'm going to need to find um one hundred and seventy thousand dollars <laughs> for a down payment <laughs> for a down payment on an SBA loan. Okay. I'm thinking it's going to be, it was going to be like a $3 million project and the building that we were looking at, it's not really panning out. That's probably why it's been for sale for so long. Mm. It's like an old brick building that's not earthquake retrofitted and stuff. So now it went from a $3 million project to like a $1.7 million project. And I don't really know anybody with any money. So I'm going to need to put on my suit and go figure out where to find a bag of cash. <laughs> See, and this is just going to be a blast following along with you. And and what we're going to do is through the podcast when we're following Nathan, uh, we're going to be delaying it. So you're going to hear his progress a little bit after and that's just to make sure that nobody comes along and swoops up Nathan's great idea. Um, but we'll, we'll be uh, talking through each of those in corresponding podcasts and <laughs> that, that'll be interesting. That'll, that'll be good to see how it goes, man. 
Cool. I'm looking forward to the journey as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, up to this point, any advice to anybody who is who's working that nine to five and they're just dreaming about starting a brewery? Yeah, I'd say start saving your money so you can quit because there's going to be a point when you're ready to quit, like it's ready for you to quit, but you can't quit because you need to pay your rent and there's going to be like the weird in-between phase where you're not really making any money. If nothing else, where you just have to be on site, like getting all the equipment in place before your doors actually open and you start selling beer, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, stay motivated, like find ways to, to motivate yourself. Yeah. What do you think? Is this even remotely doable if you're working a full-time job and trying to start up the brewery or do you think you just got to quit and go for it? Well, a lot of people can't just quit and, um, it kind of, I think it just depends on the person. Like if they're willing to turn off the TV, I like to use, I like to criticize people who watch too much TV just because I'm all pious and I don't really watch TV. (laughs) I'm not into it. But like a lot of people have these great dreams and then they go home and watch TV for like four hours every night or something. And you could be doing something that's like way more productive and beneficial to humanity and society and all these great, amazing things or whatever. So if somebody's working 40 hours a week and they go home and are um, more focused than I have been through the past year, they could totally do something like this. Okay. No, that's good to know. Don't drink beer. Totally slows down the process. Wait until after you're done working for the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's good motive. Speaking of be motivation or speaking of motivation, that's great motivation for the end of the day. <laughs> I think that's open free beer. All the free beer I can drink once I finally open the brewery. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how I got through college. I had a lab on a Tuesday, and then there was a dollar twenty five pitchers of just terrible beer but it was good at the time and so i would Uh, always work on my lab report so i could make it up for dollar 25 pitchers (laughs) get through the lab and be rewarded (laughs) exactly (laughs) well nathan it's been a blast talking to you and really i'm excited to keep following up and seeing how the progress goes and really sharing your story with all the listeners so I, i really appreciate you doing this and for all the support you've given me too it's been awesome cool yeah likewise Thanks for having me. Well, I'm looking forward to talking more. No problem, man. All right. Well, we will talk to you soon, and thanks again. Excellent. All right. Yeah, so as we go along with the rest of the podcast, uh, we're going to keep following up with Nathan and check in on his journey. Um, so I think this will be really fun to just show you all the different steps and the struggles and the successes to get a brewery started. So again, I'm really excited for that. Um, any of the resources that we talked about, any of the links that Nathan talked about, um, they're available on the show notes page. So you can just go to microbrewer.com. So M-I-C-R-O-B-R-E-W-R.com. And and then uh, this podcast is under session five. So you can just do microbrewer.com slash session five. It'll take you right to the show notes. And then uh, finally, just want to say, if you're listening to this, if you're enjoying it, make sure you get in contact with me. So uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or else you can contact me through microbrewer too. So just reach out. And also, if you want to have a beer with me, um, make sure to uh, add microbrewer on untapped and uh, I can see what your favorite brews are. So anyway, I can get in contact with you. It'll be awesome. So again, thanks for listening. Uh, Support your local breweries and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Microbrewer Podcast with Joe Shellaroo. We'll see you right here next time at microbrewer.com.